One of the great things about collecting baseball cards as a kid I used to love to do was to flip the card around to the back where you could read all about the player um, and read their statistics and sort of lose yourself in the back of the card. The front of the card, of course, is a great picture. You've got awesome photography, awesome design uh, for the most part, and uh, is really great and inviting. But when you flip to the back of the card, you often find amazing and interesting things including defects um, that came from the uh, company that sold you the card, like this strip of gum. Can you see that? There's a gum stain on the back of this card. So the gum would come in the pack, the, the pack would get sealed, um, and sometimes the gum would, the moisture of the gum would leak out onto the card and stain the back of the card. Now this is Dwight Gooden. He was my favorite player as a kid. Um, and this is his third year card, um, technically. Um, and um, in 1986, this was at, right after 1985, in which he had look at the statistics he had. One of the great years of any pitcher ever uh, on the mound, 24 and 4, uh, 1, uh, 5, 3 ERA, just a great um, year. Now, there's no blurbing really about how amazing his year was, his Cy Young winning year. Um, but they do note in this Talking Baseball blurb um, that the first player in Mets history was to, to achieve two, sac two sacrifice flies in one game was a guy named Jesse Gonder versus the Braves in 1963. So they didn't mention anything about um, Dwight Gooden's Cy Young year, but they did get in uh, sacrifice flies in 1963 as the blurb. Um, kind of a fun back of the card. Uh, Nolan Ryan, now this one... All you've got are numbers in the back of this card and again another gum stain so this was in the same uh, spot in the pack that was next to the gum and it got stained uh, these cards are printed a million times over so these gum stains i consider them to be uh, variations on the card and rarities that i will collect um, but you see, there's no room for any blurb here. Nolan Ryan has, has pitched so many years at that point, almost, eight, I guess, 18 years at that point. In 1987, he would go on to pitch, I think, four more years. So um, Nolan Ryan is another one of my gum stain goats. Um, Bo Jackson is a athlete like we had never seen before in uh, modern American sports. Uh, this is his rookie card, uh, 1988 tops. I think it's an 88 or 87, 88 tops. So uh, this was his rookie year, uh, rookie card, and that's him in his Raiders uniform. And on the back, you'll notice, again, the biggest, baddest gum stain stripe you've seen yet. Um, you can still read the card. Bo rushed for 221 yards, including a 91-yard touchdown run in against the Seattle Seahawks in 1987. That was the... Uh, game he ran over, um, what's his name, the linebacker, uh, Bosworth. Uh, he won the Heisman Trophy at Auburn. Uh, he set all kinds of rushing records, and Bo plays baseball with the Kansas City Royals, which is just an incredible sentence to, to write on a football card, um, and that makes him a, a gum stain goat. Uh, and then you got Joe Montana, again, sort of fun adventures and cards here. He has another uh, gum stripe across the back of the card there. It's very noticeable, like a chalk outline of a dead body, except it's gum. Um, and in this one, the the San Francisco 49ers had won the Super Bowl the year before, except, and there was no mention of that on the back of this card. Um, it talks about his wife, Cass, uh, who he would eventually get married, uh, I think, divorced with. Uh, talks about his degree in business administration and marketing, uh, and that he played in the Cotton Bowl. So we got a Cotton Bowl mention, but no Super Bowl. Um, some record stuff. Um, it also, by the way, you can notice here, underneath the gum, he was born uh, in Monongahela, Pennsylvania, but they shorten it, they abbreviate it, can't get all those letters in. It's a long word. And then in his home, his current home, is in Matin Beach, Ka. So, again, this is sort of copywriter's nightmare, Manhattan Beach, 
and Monongahela, two very long words that got truncated uh, for Joe Montana's 1983 Tops card. And then um, there are cards that are just like, just incredible, have incredible stories on the back of them. And one such story is on the back of this card. And vintage card collectors know this card very well, so it's not a surprise to anybody who knows. Um, this is Eddie Wakus, who played for the Philadelphia Phillies back in the late 40s and early 50s. Um, Eddie Wakus was quite a hitter, uh, and I think made an all-star team at one point. Um, but, and that's the front of the card. And if all you knew was the front of the card, you see a little damage, there's a wrinkle and a little bit of staining. So this is like as ho-hum and not uh, notable of a card as you could ever want to see. But if you turn around and read the back of the card, you'll notice, so it says the vital st stats up there. But when you read the blurb, now read along with me here. I'll try and hold it still. Eddie had appeared in 54 games last season and was hitting at a 306 clip when he was shot and seriously wounded by a demented girl fan. He is fully recovered and looks for a big 1950 season. He has never hit lower than 292 in the majors, three years in the service on the 1948 All-Star team, and was an honorary member of last year's aggregation. <laughs> so Eddie Wakis uh, was hitting 306 when his season was cut short <laughs> when he was shot by a demented girl fan. Now, if that is a story that sounds familiar to you, it should. It is very reminiscent of the Bernard Malamud uh, book, The Natural, which was turned into a movie um, in the 80s uh, starring Robert Redford. Um, an incredible movie, an incredible story. And in that story, uh, Robert Redford's character gets shot by a woman in his hotel um, and misses uh, a good stretch of his career it has to come back later on to recover his career and becomes the natural and it's that home run with the sparks flying and everything. So this was, could you imagine reading this card if you were a kid, this breaking news <laughs> that your favorite player, Eddie Wakus, was hitting 306 and uh, got cut down uh, <laughs> by a crazed fan. So that is the 19... 50 Bowman Eddie Wakus blurb. Um, and there's some question about whether or not Malamud actually took uh, the story from Eddie Wakus or not. And I don't have the definitive answer. All I can tell you is that his book, The Natural, his first novel, came out in 1952. Um, Eddie Wakus was shot in 1950. So uh, I don't know, you do the math. Um, but if you're wondering for the conclusion of the Eddie Wake story, you need to get yourself a 1952 Topps uh, baseball card. This is the um, one of the greatest sets of cards ever produced, ever. Um, and Eddie Wake is back, and he's healthy. Look how vibrant <laughs> he looks. Um, and this is a nice card, actually. I like this card. But if you turn it around, you can read. Now, don't read without me. So you got Edward Stephen Wakus. Um, and now this one starts off, rejoins the story already in progress. Shot by a crazed girl in June 1949, Ed was close to death. He fought back and helped the Phils win the pennant in 1950, hitting 284 and leading the National League at first in putouts. During World War II, he won four battle stars and was wounded as an amphibious engineer sergeant in the Pacific. One of the toughest men in the league to strike out, Ed came to the Phils from the Cubs in 1949. His best marks were 304 in 46 and 306 in 49. So <laughs> not only is he tough to kill, apparently, he's tough to strike out. So um, an exciting conclusion, uh, Ed Wakus uh, survived uh, an assassin in a hotel. He survived... Uh, World War II as an amphibious engineer sergeant in the Pacific when he was wounded, um, and he hit 306 in 1949.
um, just incredible, incredible storytelling on the back of baseball cards. And that's why I love the backs of baseball cards. And they bring me eternal joy and brought me eternal joy as a kid. And they continue. The more I read, the more they, the better they get. Uh, gum, stain or no, uh, 1950s, 60s, 70s, whenever. Um, it's really good stuff. And that's all I have for now. Thank you.